Well, Utah fans, good evening and welcome in to a Monday night edition of the Coaches Show presented by Smith's. We're high above the basketball facility here, the Huntsman Basketball Facility in the lobby of the basketball offices here tonight. Myself, and as you can see, if you're watching in on the Utah Utes YouTube channel, Larry's not with us tonight. He's out on the road recruiting, so his right-hand man and the sixth man of the year of the coaching staff Tommy Connors in here with us tonight. We're going to talk Utah basketball. We'll look back on the weekend that was the split with the Arizona schools. We'll do that coming up on the show tonight. We'll pass out our weekly awards, our players of the week and whatnot. And of course, we'll look ahead to the big road trip to the Northwest this week. Of all the road trips Utah makes, this is probably the most difficult road trip Utah makes only because you fly up to Seattle, you play a game, then they've got a couple of days because they're playing on Wednesday this week, and then it's a Saturday evening game in Pullman, and we can make all the jokes we want to about Pullman, Washington. It is a very difficult place to get to, and it's difficult for everybody to get there, but this is probably the most difficult place, and it's the same way teams traveling this way. They have to fly to Salt Lake and then fly to Colorado, but anyway, we'll talk about Washington and Washington State coming up with the program tonight. If you want to reach the program, you can do so. Text us at 877-353-0700, or feel free to hit me up on Twitter at ESPN700. Bill, well, thanks for pinching tonight, Tommy. How are you? Yeah, you bet. My pleasure. Doing great. This is a nice, comfortable setup. Yeah, this is, a, we were in the comfy chairs. Yeah. We're out here in the lobby. We've got the, uh, the beautiful plant. It's, I, I think Larry said it survived about three years now, and we're just kind of hanging out. A little snow falling outside, yeah. sun setting to the west, and uh, you guys have had a couple of days now to uh, look back on the weekend that was. Mm. A good Thursday night game, a grinder against Arizona, and then one that was kind of disjointed on Saturday with a number of fouls called, but a, uh, a good Arizona State team took the fight to you guys. Yeah, uh, you know, the Arizona game uh, was, was um, an interesting game for us as we started off the first half. Uh, you know, a little bit, a little bit slower than maybe we had hoped, uh, and a little bit worried. All right, we're back at home, and we hadn't been playing that great. And the guys regrouped second half, and we had just an unbelievable run from what was it about that 12 or 11 minute mark? Yep. Uh, in between those timeouts, that four minute period where we um, really built a lead and um, did a good job. But the guys played hard; they did a nice job. And. Arizona's down a little bit this year, and of course their good player Brandon Williams isn't playing, and that really hurts them. But we certainly don't feel sorry for them. They've had our number <laughs> for all right. these years, you know. And uh, um, I was I was very impressed, and we were really pleased with the way our guys finished that game, the second half, and then um, took care of the ball at the end, and um, you know came out with a win. So that was a that was a great win, and then it was a quick turnaround for us. Yeah, we'll talk about Arizona State in a minute. Larry said he kind of felt like the tide was changing midway through that second half. He felt like maybe they were getting a little tired. But what flipped for you guys? What changed over that final 12 minutes against Arizona? Well, we got uh, some turnover uh, easy baskets. Um, and then we got some stops, got out on the break, and made a couple threes. I believe there's a stretch there where we had two turnovers for easy baskets and followed up with a three. I, I don't have an exact order. Right. but. Um, we, you know, we got on a little bit of a run. We just got some easy baskets. They're a pretty good defensive team. They're solid in the half court, and we uh, were able to get out in the open court. Um, and then we had just a lot of energy. Timmy diving on the ball was, you know, would just kind of epitomize the, that stretch of where we were. Uh, and we just were playing a little bit better than they were at that time, a little bit harder. Uh, we were the aggressor, and um, guys made some big plays. That was that period where Jace had some nice follows, you know, some end one follow ups on some misses and uh, it was just a it was just a really good stretch the home crowd got in it yep and uh, that made made a huge difference yeah and you had Parker Van Dyke making threes he's been in quite a zone for you guys the last yeah. two weeks or so but he was man, I think he made his first five in that game he, he kind of kept in it in the first half because nobody else really found any real offensive sink I think he had 15 in the first half of that game and then Obviously finished up with 23. Yeah, very much so. He was he was the reason we were in it the first half for a, a while there. We couldn't score, and he was banging off tough ones, and Coach Miller was calling timeout, it seemed like, <laughs> on every one he made. You know, I mean, obviously they were trying not right. to let him shoot, and he got it off. So uh, great first half by Parker, and uh, followed up with a solid second half. They just, they just limited him like he should. And uh, then we had some other guys step up. So it was an overall, overall, it was a really good performance by the guys. So beating Arizona is something you never apologize for, whether they're down or not. Second win in the Pac-12 era for Utah against the Wildcats. And then, as you mentioned, the quick turnaround. Well, you know, you're at home, but it's still a 48-hour turnaround yeah. for you guys. Uh, Arizona State had an extra day. They played on Wednesday night. 
got in. They, they, in essence, had about three days of rest because it was a late game and then another late game. So uh, you, you know that that's a different beast than the Arizona team you're playing. They're a little bit more herky-jerky up and down the floor. They'll shoot it. They'll pound it inside. Yeah. And they'll get up, be physical, and pressure you a little bit, too. Yeah. And they, they really came out with a lot of energy and effort right out of the gates and gave you guys some fits early. Yeah, they did. Um, well, in fact, the, the, the funny thing is they were here Wednesday. They came in, came in after the game, I think, is what they said. They're here like three nights. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's, I think that's a bit of an advantage. We've been in that, that, uh, that situation before where we've had that. Um, so it's a, you know, it's a quick turnaround. When, when you play a game like that, a Thursday, Saturday, you just, you, we, the way we prep is we prep for the Thursday game. And we never look past an opponent. And then you turn around and you you're go through a, a practice where you can't really do much live. Um, because, you know, you just, you, you, you need energy more than anything. You need good legs, you need energy. Some guys are banged up a little bit for the Saturday game. So you do a lot of video work. You do some walkthrough on the floor. You try to get concepts down. And uh, it's a tough turnaround when you play a team like ASU. And the reason I say that is because they do a lot. You, you, you kind of mentioned they're a different team. Well, they, they have a million sets in man. And we've been zoning a lot. But in zone, they've, they do they do various things, tons of zone offense, then they'll run their man plays. And so you're trying to figure out what is it that they're going to do against us. And then we try to prep that way. And then the game starts and you realize, well, some of it we got right, but they're actually running a lot of their man stuff. Right. And so you adjust on the run. And uh, the reason I bring this up is just for the listeners and the viewers is it's, it's a bit of a chess match in, in preparation. Um, and then you, you know, then you, you come out and you say, okay, they're going to this stuff, and then you quickly do something that maybe you, you hadn't prepped for. But uh, they, they came out and played very well. They, they were unbelievable at the start, and uh, certainly the credit to ASU, the way they started the game. They were ready to go. I thought we were ready to go too, but they were certainly the aggressor, and they, they, they punched us in the mouth at the start of the game. That's, that's kind of almost a, a Bobby Hurley philosophy is they're going to get out and pressure and be aggressive with you, and they're almost going to force the officials to blow the whistle, aren't they? They're going, to, they're going to play aggressive defense against you until that whistle's blown. Rick Pitino did that a lot when he was at Louisville, that jumping and pressing and trapping type defense. And they get yeah. up in you, and they're going to say, okay, we're going to play this way until these guys in the striped shirts tell us we can't play this way. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's just that's the style. Yeah. And it's one of those, are, can you call a foul every time? No. And sometimes they did. And <laughs> the then, then sometimes did, on yeah. us. Uh, you're right, though. It was a it was a disjointed game. It had no flow. It was it it, it was it was a uh, it felt it felt weird coaching the game. You know, um, it, it's you know you're trying to get in the rhythm of the play, and then there's a foul, or then you know then we foul them, and then you know we're at the free throw line, and we go one for two repeatedly, um, and you have an open shot and you miss it. And those are the shots you have to beat against a team or make against a team like that and then they have a couple players step up and make shots that they haven't been making so you got to be pretty darn good when they give their best effort and um you know they had so they had their best players play very very well and our play our best players played well but 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 not quite at the level they're capable of i mean we need cedric to shoot better than one for six from three yep. to beat to beat asu um and we need Donnie to play a little bit better off the bench for us and, and, and give us a little bit more lift there. So, you know, you have to, you have to play a, a darn near, you know, not perfect game, but you, you got to be at your best to beat a good team that's playing at their best. And they played much, much better than what we saw when we played them at their place. Um, we kind of punched them in the mouth in that, after that, you know, the late half, first half, second half, we, get, we were the aggressors. But um, they were awfully good, and a lot of credit goes to them. We'll take our first time out here on the Coaches Show tonight. We'll come back and got to figure out where Utah is right now. There's five games left in the regular season, but this is that time of year where everybody's tired. Everybody's got some bangs and bumps and bruises and all that stuff. So how do you play through that? How do you fight through that? And what lies ahead in the next five games? We'll give our awards of the week as well. All that coming up in our show tonight, by the way, being brought to you by Anheuser-Busch and Budweiser. Proud sponsor of Utah Athletics, encouraging you to drink responsibly. Back on the other side with more of the Coaches Show, presented by Smith. Tommy sitting in tonight for Larry. And this is Utah Basketball from Learfield IMG College.
He ended up 7 of 10 of deep. That was his 7th against Arizona. He was just absolutely in the zone. Parker Van Dyke, that's our Code Red Mountain Dew and Pepsi Play of the Week. Proud sponsors of Utah Athletics. Grab yourself a Mountain Dew Code Red and get yourself into the game. Um, he's been in quite a zone as of late for you guys. Uh, maybe it was the confidence of making some shots down at UCLA and being the lead play on Sports Center, but there was a stretch leading up to and just past the Arizona game where he had made 10 of 14 threes. I think he's made about 11 of 18 or something, which is mm. still a fantastic yeah. percentage over the last three games. Yeah, yeah, Parker's playing at a high level, um, and I'm happy for him. He works awfully hard at it. And I think coming off the UCLA game, that just certainly carried. I mean, yeah. you're right. I mean, you're the, you're, the world saw you. <laughs> that, that, oh. ki that, kid, that kid goes to church the next day, and he was the star. Uh, and it carried over. Confidence is an yeah. incredible thing in athletics, and especially in basketball, and in particular for shooters. Um, and I just think that he, you know, he just had tremendous confidence uh, f from that. And he's pretty much, for the most part, had it all year, and he's letting it fly. And um, the Arizona game is, is phenomenal, that first half that he there, had. There was no real even thought. I mean, sometimes you yeah. can see a catch, hesitation, then go. He was just catching and shooting against Arizona. There was no thought at all. There wasn't. And then today what we, we watched uh, some film and helped correct him on in Arizona State, there's a couple times he should have shot faked. And he's a good shot fake yes. guy. And, but he, you know, he, he, he's, he's just, once you kind of get going and you're jumping up shooting, you probably think you can hit the next one or get it off. And there were two, um, one in the first half, one in the second half. He should have lifted a guy, they fly by, and then he shoots. And he knows right now they're all going to be coming at him. Um, so he's, he, he'll get that down. You know, that we call it a flyby, and then sometimes he can just let him go and shoot a three or sidestep and shoot a three or maybe, you know, drive it in to a pull-up or a draw a kick. But he's going to have to do that the rest of the year because without a doubt, he's at the top of the scouting report like he probably was to a certain extent, but it was Cedric. For, you know, and then knew Parker could shoot, but now Parker's the one just really hurting teams, and uh, he's got to make an adjustment uh, now with some shot fakes. I was, you and I were talking about this before the show, and, and I made mention of it going to the break, but you know, you're at that point of the year where you've got five games left in the regular season, then conference tournament, then whatever happens after that, but everybody right now is tired. Mm -hmm. They've got bumps, they've got bruises, they're dealing with some sort of an injury. You've got a handful of guys that are all key guys on mm -hmm. your team that are dealing with right, that right now. Yeah. Um, you gotta play through it. Everybody's yeah. got them this year. Nobody, you know, like you said, nobody cries for you when you have an injury. That's you right. don't cry for Colorado or Arizona when they've got an injury either, you just play. Yeah. But what do you guys as a staff do to try and mitigate some of that stuff? shorten practices, go a little lighter in some of the practices this time of year, work maybe more in the film room as much as maybe not as much on the floor, go quite as hard. What do you yeah. guys do to mitigate some Yeah, of well, especially on a quick turnaround like we have this week, a Saturday to a Wednesday game, uh, def lighter, shorter. Uh, you know, some guys sit out and rest, and it's just a mental shoot maybe, shoot free throws, shoot, uh, feel good about themselves, a lot, of, a lot of film work. So just the things you said, definitely it's uh, less pounding and, and you got to carry a mental approach into the next game as much as a physical approach because, you know, when you play, you, we need the energy and the effort and the physical part of it. Can't beat them up anymore in practice right now. Right. Do you feel like your freshmen have pushed through whatever freshman wall might have been there? You know, we always um, hear that term yeah. freshman wall, and sometimes it yeah. hits you late in the non-conference or early in the conference season. Do you feel like yeah. most of your guys, Batten, Allen, Gotch, have kind of pushed through that? Well, you know, I think that what Timmy's struggling with right now is he just he, he physically is beat up, yeah. and that's, that's hard for him because the way he plays, um, he's kind of in that, that, that physical wall, you know, where he's just he's, he's, his body's, uh, you, you know, hurting right now. And um, I think the other guys are doing okay. Um, they, uh, they, they, their wake-up call was a little earlier in the season, to be honest. It would, I think it was, you know, it's just harder than you yeah. realize. And then they got kind of in a rhythm, okay, and, and this is what we have to do, and this is how we have to be successful. So they're doing fine. Um, but for the most part, you know, like, you know, a guy like Cedric, he gets worn down a little bit. Um, he plays a lot of minutes, and he handles it, and teams are on him, and teams are double-teaming him and trapping him. And, you know, you put a big guy like, Lou Dort on y'all game. He should be a fullback <laughs> playing for the Sun Devils or in the NFL doing something, and that's going to wear you down. So, um, yeah, the young the young kids. It's it's an adjustment and a grind. Where they're really learning though is the mental part of it. Yeah, and they're still learning that. 
And uh, interestingly, today, like Riley, we prepped him for a couple things for ASU, and, and he, had, he didn't do a couple of those things we prepped him for. And he's a smart, and he knows, right? The, the minute he does it, he knows. And then we show him on video today, okay, did, we worked on this, and he, sure, I mean, he realizes it. Right. But it's a process, and uh, it, it, takes, it takes a little bit of time. Well, we'll see if they're able to bounce back this week. Again, everybody's dealing with these things this time of year. The good news for you guys is you don't have any serious injuries. Yeah. You don't have those injuries where a guy's out three or four weeks, um, where a guy might not, you know, maybe that high ankle sprain that's keeping him out for a while. You're dealing with the bumps and the bruises everybody has to deal with. Yeah, that's right. And, and like you said, I mean, no one feels sorry for, for anybody in this league right now. It's all, it's all the same. And you got to bring it. Every, you got to bring it every night. And, um, you got to have a great. You got to have great effort, and fight through it mentally and physically. And um, you know, starting Wednesday night, and then it's it's going to be over like that. And well, the, the good news is the Utes have been road warriors this year. They've won five of six on the road in conference play. They'll need to be road warriors again this week because they play the best team in the league in Washington on Wednesday night. And then they're playing a surging team coming up on Saturday, a team that the first time around Utah didn't see one of the best scorers in the league, Robert Franks. Well, they'll see Robo Franks on Saturday night at Beasley Coliseum. So we'll talk about that a little bit coming up. We'll talk to Tommy about the state of the league, the craziness that is the Pac-12 Conference. And coming up next, we'll also pass out our weekly awards. All that coming up here on The Coaches Show, presented by Learfield IMG College. I guess we'll call that our drive of the game. Jace Johnson right there. 
You can customize your rogue in your team's favorite colors for a chance to win it. For official rules and entering that contest, go to NissanUSA.com slash Rogue Sweepstakes. No purchase necessary. Contest ending 331. 19, that was an and one by Jace. He got a bunch of those opportunities on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. And he played relatively well, too, the other night as well. And, and, and to be very fair, Tommy, you know, we talked about this with Larry. He, people don't realize, but he's been playing with just a horrific case of plantar fasciitis for the first two years. Mm -hmm. Never really got his conditioning down. Then he missed part of the early season because he broke a little bone in his foot. But, boy, I think the last two and a half to three weeks, Certainly the last three or four games, he's played some of the best ball he's played at college. Oh, without a doubt. Jace has given us so much right now, and um, he's helping us win games. You know, it's easy to see missed free throws. It's easy to see sometimes a miss around the rim. Uh, but, but what you need to see, what people need to see, what we see is a tremendous defensive presence, uh, one of the league's best rebounders, and um, when he's not out there, it's clear that we really lack some rebounding and some inside presence on D. And then when the games where he actually gets it going offensively, like 17 in the first or second half against Arizona, I believe it was, right? Yeah. That was a, a, an unbelievable second half performance by Jay. So uh, we're really pleased with Jay. He's, he's playing great basketball. And he just, you know, we just need to keep working on some things with him. Uh, on the other end, but um, he's doing a great job for us. Uh, what I've really noticed on the defensive end is, and, and he'll, like some seven-foot bigs, get called for calls that you wonder about, but he's doing a really good job of just holding his ground and going straight up and mm -hmm. down. He must have blocked two or three shots against ASU just going hands Yeah, they shot up. it into him. Yeah, they shot right yeah. into him, and he grabbed the ball and yeah. pulled it away. Yeah, we, but he's not, he's not jumping or lunging the way... He did the first couple of years. For the most part. For the most, yeah, yeah, every yeah. now and again. He, 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 we call that a wall, you know, and uh, we, we wall up on, on guys and try to make them score over. And a lot of times when he does it perfectly, they just they shoot it right in or take a bad shot. Occasionally he'll get up under him too much, and it causes his arms to come down a little, and the refs call that a foul. So we worked on that today, of just, just being a little more straight up and not, but not getting under him a lot. Now, Wednesday is going to have a real challenge. Uh, with Dickerson because Dickerson is such a physical post-up guy that it's going to be just a battle and when he catches it he goes right away so it's going to be a real battle on Wednesday but Jace's, Jace's defense has been great. Can you clear a rule up for me? It, our, uh, our, I'm bad with rules our, but our I'll post, try. Are post defenders allowed to throw forearms into the no, back of the guys? that uh, and Boy that seemed no, to not. be uh, something that was missed on Saturday it, night because uh, it, it wasn't Jace, one possession. I was going to say two or three I saw Jace's back probably has a couple of bruises on it yeah. from Romella White's no, forearm. No you can't do that. And, you know, I mean, and that's the thing. We, you sometimes on the perimeter, the minute you do that, it's an easy call. Yep. But you can't do that in the post. And there was, there was one real glaring one that, that Larry got really upset it was about. Three, it was Jace went three times yeah. and got three yeah. forearms right in the middle of his no, back. No, that, that's, what the, that's what they call a foul. Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just, well, that's why you're on the show. It just was. Well, yeah. To clarify those those well, stick, those, yeah. those rule things. I got those rules down. <laughs> so we got to pass out our awards tonight. Our player of the week award and our subway sub of the week award. Let's start first with our player of the week award. It's brought to us by our friends at University of Utah Healthcare. Visit them online at uofuhealth.org/utes. Um, Parker Van Dyke. You good with that? Yeah, I, player of the week? I, I think that's an excellent player of the week, and I think Jace would would be right there. Um, but uh, he had forty in two games, and in the yeah. two he had twenty three one night and seventeen the other yeah. night. Parker did. Yeah, I, I I think that's an excellent choice. Parker had two great games. We need him to keep playing at a high level. So Parker Van Dyke will be our player of the week this week. Brought to us by U of U Health. Sub of the week's a little bit more interesting. We've gone with Parker on the sub of the week, but we're not going to give him sub and player of the week because you've been bringing him off the bench. So. Can we go in a little bit different direction here tonight? I, I, I love the fact that Brandon Morley came in off the bench. Brandon hasn't seen much time at mm -hmm. all since the non-conference season. And he hit that huge three near the end of the first half that brought you guys back within a point at 32-31. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Grabbed a couple of big rebounds in both games and then knocked down two threes in the ASU game yeah. the other day. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I mean, this is a kid who, who has sat on the bench and hasn't played all year, really. And... Uh, Two big games, he gets his number called, and he gave us great minutes. And uh, he definitely deserves sub of the week. So Brandon Morley will be our Subway sub of the week. Give us a little backstory on Brandon. Went to Bingham High School, 
down, grew up down in South Jordan. Obviously, he was. He, he said he told me I was. I've always been a Utah fan. Yeah. But he wasn't ready to play Division One basketball coming out of high school, so he goes over and plays at Slick for a couple of years. Yeah, he was always skilled like he is, but he was like 180 pounds in high school. <laughs> Seven and, feet uh, tall and 180 yeah, pounds. Yeah, he was just real thin, and um, and then he 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 went to. Uh, he actually started at a different junior college, and then transferred to Salt Lake for his second year played and then after he did a little bit differently than a lot of kids then he went on a mission after and I mean he's 24 years old now and uh, we got him back I mean you know we get we, we got lucky he's he's a paying his way to go to school here and be on our team and he's a valuable member of our team he makes us better every day and right now he's getting a chance and he's going to probably continue to get that um, speaking of seven footers you had your other seven footer on campus this weekend he's signed he's committed so you're allowed to talk about him but the young man from down at Pleasant yep. Grove uh, seven three, Matt Van Komen, who came on his official visit, though he'd already committed. Um, what, what's Matt going to bring, or what are you guys hoping Matt comes in and brings next year when he joins you guys on the floor? Yeah, his dad would say seven four. He'd correct you. Okay, I think, uh, and he's close. He's he's right there. He's one of the two. Well, he makes Larry look small. He's plenty big enough. Yes. Um, you know, we're really excited about Matt. Matt's uh, got it. He has a an, ex an extremely high ceiling uh, to be an outstanding college player and one day probably beyond he just needs strength he needs time he right. needs he needs to put on some weight and some strength but for his size he's a tremendous athlete the way he runs and moves he's fluid his hands are terrific uh, he has timing to block shots um, he's skilled around the basket it's the game's pretty easy for him for for big guys sometimes it's not and it takes some time but for a an extra big guy like him, the game's easy. He catches it, he knows what to do with it. He runs, um, unbelievably coordinated. He just needs, he just needs uh, to get stronger because he's gonna get, physically it's gonna be hard for him uh, next year. And um, the great thing is he has time on his side. We have a lot of bigs, we'll see where we are. If he, do, if he can help us, he'll play. If not, then maybe we'll redshirt him and try to get some weight on him. Well, he's, uh, he's gonna be a project for Rock and for Ernie for sure. It's gonna be a fun one too. Yeah, it'll be yeah. fun to see him. I don't watch a ton of high school basketball like you do, but I've seen some clips of Matt. He looks like he's a guy that can step out and knock down a 15-foot jump shot. Too. Yeah, he has a nice, he has a nice yeah. stroke. Shoots uh, free throws nice. He, it's, it's a good-looking stroke. I mean, he's got all the pieces now, Bill. He's a, he's a, we're, we're, he, he has a bright future. He really does. And um, with the other bigs we have, Carlson coming back, who's a talented 7-foot kid, you know, and then Jace with all the experience, and then Young Lahat. Yeah. Uh, we, we're, there's no shortage for bigs in our program, that's for sure, and yeah. they're going to make each other better. I was going to say, you're going to have a lot of length and the ability yes. to protect the rim. That's right. For, the, for years More to than come. we've ever had. Yeah. And we will, we, we will be a shot-blocking team for the next four to five years because we have multiple guys that can do it. All right, let's take yeah. a time out. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Washington Huskies. They're the team Utah sees on Wednesday night. Very good team. Mike Hopkins' team is clearly, we've said this for a long time, there's two things we can definitively say about the Pac-12. Washington's the best team, Cal's the worst team, and everybody else is in between. We'll talk about the best team in the league so far next. This is the Coach's Show from Learfield IMG College.
Yeah, that's the guy we were talking about before the break, Brandon Morley. He's got a really nice stroke from out there. Catches some teams by surprise. His heart, when seven-footers are shooting threes, even if you close out on them, that's a, that's a hard shot to block. We welcome you back into the Coaches Show tonight. Presented by Smith, Tommy Connor, pinch hitting for Larry tonight, who's out on the road recruiting. Um, you guys will be in Washington tomorrow night for the game Wednesday night. We'll have that game for you here along the network. And uh, 9 o'clock, Mountain Time start time, so it's a little bit later. I know you guys don't love those late night starts. That's a lot of sitting around the hotel, yeah. long days and such, but is what it is. You're yeah. going to play at 9 o'clock, and you're going to play a team that beat you here a um, month or so ago. And they've been the best team in the league so far this year, Tommy. I don't think there's any doubt about mm -hmm. it, but you, you kind of should be when you bring your top seven players back, right. seven talented players from the year before. Yeah, no question. I think everyone knew they'd be good. I was actually shocked they weren't picked number one in the league. Yeah. I don't think they were. If they I were recall. not. Oregon was. Yeah. Um, in, in my mind, they were going to be, uh, and that's come to fruition. They're, they're, you know, they've, they've got great experience, excellent talent, uh, a system that they're really good at on defense, and one elite defender that makes up for pretty much everybody uh, in Thibault. Um, and they're playing with a lot of confidence. And they, they are right now, I think, the, the elite team in our league. And it's going to be a it's going to be a big feat, a uh, big challenge for our team. But they are a team that is beatable. Uh, you know, there's been some teams in our league over the years. Uh, I'm, you know, I just, you know, honestly, I'm just not sure if we were going to be able to beat them. Right. Um, Washington is a beatable team. Um, that, but they, you got to play your best game. There's no question. Yeah, and, and it begins with Thibel. You mentioned him. He's yeah. arguably the best defensive player in college basketball. He's a six-five, six-six point of their zone defense guy, all arms. He had, he's great, got great instincts yep. to anticipate. He's a great help side defender too, blocks a lot of shots from behind. So it really all begins with him. And, and the other thing about him is he's not just a defensive player because he's worked on his shot. He's become a better shooter this year. Yeah, yeah. There, he's going to be on an NBA roster next year. There's no doubt in my mind um, because he does one thing well. He can really guard. And then he's, like you said, he's uh, improved his shot. He stretches the floor. He's athletic. Um, but he's a nightmare uh, in that zone. And our guys, you, you only can prep so much on video. They've seen all the stuff he does, stealing it and blocking from behind. And we work hard on pass fakes and knowing where he is and move him to make a pass. Uh, but until you experience it, you just can't, you can't replicate it in practice. Right. And that happened the first game. And it's funny, some of our young kids who didn't play against him said, wow, you, you told us, you warned us. You know, you guys, but, you know, yeah. you, you were right. And then, since then, up until we play him now, a lot of our prep, we show a lot of Washington stuff, you know, because we're playing a lot of zone, and so we are watching other teams against Washington. And every game our guys see, they see him doing the exact same things uh, that he did to us and that he prepped for. So... It's a constant. He's very good, and he's, uh, he causes a lot of problems. Got some other good players, too. Uh, probably their best consistent scorer is Jalen Noel. He's a very good player, probably a pro at some point in time as well. Uh, David Crisp, who's a little left-handed shooting guard, who's seemed to have his best games of his yep. career against you guys. But the guy that's really, and Chris feels like he's been around for a while. But I'll tell you what, a guy that's really impressive and is a testament to sticking around and where you, we were just talking about hard work and how hard are you going to work to get after it. Uh, Noah Dickerson, their big man, um, in his time, he's a senior now, uh, in his time at uh, the University of Washington, I think he's lost about 65 or 70 pounds. I remember playing him way over 300 pounds three or four years ago when he first got there. He's down to about 255, 260. He's about 6'9", 6 6'10", 6 but he's worked really hard on his game. He's become a really yeah. nice basketball player. For yeah, he, he has. He's, he's an inside presence. They go to him. Um, they really try to establish him in the post. He's a really awkward player. He, he, he constantly, he's constantly in an entanglement with you, and half the time he's falling down, or you're fouling him, or they call a foul it's on like you. It's like a game of twister with him in there. It, yeah, it's a great way to put it. And there, it's hard to officiate him. Um, and the refs that know that know him well, obviously, they understand that a lot of times he fouls the defender. So, you know, the don't, be, don't call it on the defender because it looks like it, but he's actually causing. So it's a hard game to, to officiate, and it's a hard game to play. We, we prep our guys on a certain style with him uh, in what to do. And, um, 
but it's uh, it's it's on. I mean, the, from from the tip, he's down there battling in the post, and he's turned out to be a really nice player for them. When you play Washington, you're going to see zone for 40 minutes. It's like when you play Arizona, you're going to see man to man for 40 minutes. They zoned us though, <laughs> which is funny. Yeah, it, it's funny. Larry said we we prepared for man, but they'll probably and they did zone yeah. you guys a little bit. They're short hit. Washington probably will not. That's this, they this will dude. not man us. Yeah, they will not. They Mike will Hopkins not is a Jim Beheim disciple, and yep. they play that that matchup zone. And they've got the you know whenever you have length, you can play it and play it well. You guys last year played well against it, and I think the real key a year ago was Tyler Ross. Mm-hmm. You had Ty in the middle of that, and getting to the middle of that zone, getting past their length is always important. And you had Ty, who was a great distributor, but he could also face up and shoot it. Um, you have a couple of guys who can do that. Question is, will they? Riley Batten, who did it a little bit against, I think, bit. UCLA. Mm-hmm. I think he had a good game against the Bruins when they zoned you a little bit, got in the middle, turned, faced up. And Timmy could do it a little bit, too. But is that really the key to play in that zone? Because you're not going to get a lot of wide-open looks just dribbling up the floor against that zone. Yeah, that's a big key. Uh, Rossin was the the zone buster. I mean, he and Bibbins really killed that zone. And then Dave was really good down around the basket. Um in the first game, Timmy made some good plays and then he made some bad plays. Right. And we knew that was going to come because you just, again, you can't replicate the zone of practice and then you experience it, he'll be better this game. Riley, same thing, made some good plays, made some bad plays. Um, the key on that zone is you have to have patience. You have to move the zone with ball fakes and shot fakes. And then you have to attack some, you have to get a little bit more penetration where you, you're, you're, you're collapsing it and then kick. And we didn't do that that well the first game. We'll, we'll try to improve that. And that's what game. you did last year. They yeah. collapse on when, when they finally figured out what Ty Rawson was, they collapsed and he kicked it. And Justin yeah. Bibbins had a couple of big games. No, we, had, that we were shots. unbelievable offensively against them last year. And, um, and in fact, our, in our first prep game, we showed a lot of that. Um, but we couldn't bring Ty back to park him in the high post. All we could do was show well, it. Well, Ty and Justin are overseas yeah. playing for you right now, That's so right. they can't uh, they can't come back. And I also mentioned too, it'll be a great atmosphere. It's oh, one it's, of the, it's one it of the good. It's one it's of the really game. good buildings in the Pac-12. Great city. Yep. Uh, yeah. A great arena. Great crowd. Uh, good team. Uh, very well coached team. Good. Good coach. Like him a lot. Like his approach. And um, and we've always played well there. And. Um, we expect to play well there Wednesday for sure. We'll take a time out here on the Coaches Show. When we come back, a look around the conference, which has been hard to predict. If you win more than a couple of games in a row, you're on quite a streak. One team is on quite a streak right now, and they've moved from near the bottom to the middle. Uh, but can anybody make a run toward the top? We'll talk about that when we get back on the other side. Coaches Show presented by Smiths right here from Learfield IMG College.
tonight's Coaches Show, presented by Smiths. Oh. One there from Timmy Allen. Our coach show tonight being brought to you by Smith's Low Prices and Market Fresh. Proud sponsor of Utah Basketball and the Utah Basketball Coaches Show. Tommy sitting in here with us tonight. Utah heading off to the state of Washington. Um, you've been in this league now eight seasons. You've coached a lot of basketball over the years. Saw some crazy years back in the WAC and some in the Mountain West. Is this as hard a league to figure as you can remember? in recent years, yeah. week in and week out? Yeah, without a doubt. Certainly in the Pac-12 the last eight years, um, like we were just talking, I mean, I, I can't even keep track of records, let alone our own record. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's entertaining. Yeah. I know that. It really is. I mean, we, we, we obviously don't have, you know, these three or four NCAA projected teams and top 25 teams, but it's an entertaining league and the conference tournament's gonna to be quite interesting. How does it make for you guys scouting? Is it really any different scouting this year than in other years? Or do things change wildly for you guys because you're watching lots and lots of videotape when you scout and get ready for games? No, no, it doesn't really change. Teams aren't changing what they do. The results are a little bit different. Yeah. It's hard to read teams from night to night, but you know who the personnel are. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And then some teams just, they, they're, some teams are an enigma. They are, they're unbelievable some nights and they're not as good the next, you know, that's nice. You guys it, can it, put your team put, in that, in throw that us category. Right in there. We've been unbelievable on the road and not as good as we'd like at home. That, which is a weird, weird thing too. Yeah. Five and one on the road in conference play. Yeah. That, that's pretty remarkable. It is. I mean, it really is. And the one loss was a loss that was close. A whisker away. Yeah. A whisker away yeah. from being a win down in Tucson. Well, we need to keep that streak going this week and then the next two weeks, right? I, I will say this. When we get down to Las Vegas in three weeks, it's going to be crazy. It Re is. Really and truly. Yep. I, I don't believe, people will say, well, anybody can win the tournament. I don't believe that's necessarily the case. But I do believe anybody that has a first-round bye can win it. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, and I don't know who the top four teams are going to be. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows right that's now right. because there's five or six games left depending on who you are. So the, outside of Washington, who I'm pretty sure will be in the top four and probably the number one seed. Right. It's just so tough, Tommy, yeah. to win four consecutive nights, you know, in, in against good competition, a competition that gets better seemingly yeah. every single night. It, it's a hard thing Almost to do. Almost impossible. Almost impossible. Yeah. Colorado did it that very first year That's right. down at the Staples Center. Um, they we came. were their first victim, but and we battled them too. You did, that yeah. was, and that was whew, yeah. That that was the interesting thing about that team. <laughs> You guys were, you, it was quite a project, but uh, th those kids played hard yep. for you. As bad as that season was, those kids really played hard for you. Didn't have a ton of talent, but they played yeah. really hard. They did, and that game epitomized it. Yeah. We played really hard and, and, and very well against them. So winning four games is tough. Yeah, it is. But uh, it's, I think it's going to make for a very interesting tournament where, yep. you know, nobody's safe. There's not a, you know, Washington's the best team in the league, but they're not a dominant juggernaut that couldn't get knocked off yeah, on a given right. night, especially on a neutral floor. That's right. No, it's, it's, it's sent in eight years of doing this, uh, I don't think there's been a year like this one. No, you I know, would agree with you. It's just uh, each week it seems to change. So we'll see what happens this week. Give me a quick thought on Washington State. I know you guys are all focused on Washington, but you've seen a little bit of Washington oh, yeah. State. They're a much different team than the team that was here a month yeah. ago. They've gotten some marquee wins, and you didn't even see them with their best player here, Robert Franks. No, we got a break. Um, they're playing very well. A lot of confidence. Uh, Franks is an all, he's a Pac-12 first team player, probably on an NBA roster next year because of his skill set at 6'9 to shoot. Well, um, he almost came out this past yeah. year and decided to come back instead. Yeah, that's right. Uh, he's a monster. And they, they've just, you know, they're one of those teams where when they start clicking, they get, pretty, they get going pretty good, and especially at home. Uh, so that's, this, is, this is a heck of a road trip. And, um, you know, if, if Frank's got injured and by the time we play him, that would be okay with us if we don't <laughs> have to see him again. But we're planning on it. He's, he's a special talent. That'll be on Saturday evening up at Beasley Coliseum in Pullman. First game is Wednesday night in Seattle against the University of Washington. Final break here on the Coaches Show tonight. Tommy and I will come back and wrap it up next. This is Utah Basketball and the Utah Basketball Coaches Show from Learfield IMG College.
see what he can get going up in the state of Washington against the Huskies and against the Cougars. Final segment here on the Coach's Show tonight. Tommy Connor sitting in with us here tonight. We're, uh, we're uh, watching Larry go out and recruit. Uh, he'll be with the team up in Washington out seeing some recruits. You guys have your class pretty well set, but the recruiting game never ends, does it? You guys no, are always always looking. And now, too, between Juke Junior College and now the transfers. Yeah. And the transfer, the, elu the elusive transfer portal, you guys always have your eye out there, don't you? Yeah. No, recruiting's 24-7, 365. It just is. It's the lifeblood of the program. And, um, yeah, so we're uh we're on it and and there's just some nights when we get a little bit of a break where coach k has to get out and tonight was one of them do you like the class coming in you've got a lot of high talent high school got an international kid coming in one of hano's kids from yep. finland you got the two missionaries that are coming back and brandon and jack uh, ja uh yeah jackson yeah jackson Brandson. and and then of course van coman who you yep. mentioned earlier and the kid that plays just down the street at olympus high school yep. ryland uh I love it. I love our. I love the freshman class. Uh, great compliment to the freshman class we have this year, and because um, we bring in some size, we bring in some multi-dimensional positional player in in uh, Miki, the f kid from Finland, and then we, um, and then you know Ryland, Ryland just a, a pure pure passing point guard that's going to affect the game for us. He's going to help our team win next year. Uh, so it's a good group. Yeah, we just we just um, need to probably figure out our shooting a little bit in the backcourt because we lose lose a lot with Seth and Parker. Right. Um, you mentioned Mika, young man from Finland, mm -hmm. played for Hano, who you know very well, one of the all-time favorite youths, who's now heading up the Finnish national team program and basketball academy over there. What kind of a, you know people have seen Ryland Jones and Matt Van Komen, and they probably remember your missionaries that are coming back from when they are Utah kids. Yeah. But this kid's playing in Finland. And yeah. You may have seen some grainy videotape of yeah, him playing right. in a tournament, but what kind of player is he? What well, kind of he, a? He's just, he, he's six nine for uh, Hano refer, refers to him as an Alex Jensen type for those that uh, that that know uh, you know followed the program for a long time and Alex just does a lot well. Um, he brings the ball on the break. He's kind of a point forward. Okay. You know, he can bring it and really push it and make plays. Excellent passer, great feel, outstanding rebounder. Again, these are some Alex Jensen qualities when yeah. he was a player here. Uh, good shooter, not a great shooter, but improving. He can make threes, but he's got to continue to improve it. Um, good post up, physical, tough. He, he's, he's just a really good player. He, he's going to add a lot to our team. And uh, he has a great IQ and feel for the game. So. We're really excited about them. All right, biggest key. We've got 30 seconds. Biggest key on Wednesday night against Washington. Uh, well, limit limit turnovers. Yes. You know, ver versus their zone. When you turn it over, they pretty much score. We'll have some, but we need to limit them. Uh, be very efficient on offense and uh, get great shots. And then they're they're a very good transition team at home. So get back, put the fire out. Thanks, Tommy. Yeah, you bet. Tommy Cotter with us here on the Coaches Show tonight. We'll talk to you Wednesday night from Heckhead in Seattle as Utah takes on the Washington Huskies. Thanks to J.P. Chunga, our entire crew here at the basketball facility. For Tommy Cotter, I'm Bill Riley saying so long and good night. This is Utah basketball from Learfield IMG College. Good night.